Hey, what's going on guys, Kevin Kinsey here. In this video, I'd like to introduce Python Linux. So what Python Linux is, it's a small Linux distribution that boots directly into the Python shell. It's built on top of tiny core Linux. And uh, in particular, I've been using the Easy Remaster tool to create a custom ISO image. And um, what is interesting here is that the home folder is persistent. So if you say download some packages by Python pip and store them locally to the, to the current user, then when you reboot, those packages would still remain. So uh, on the one hand, you don't really need to install this into your laptop. On the other hand, uh, you can just boot from USB flash drive and whatever changes you've made and stored to the home directory would be persistently stored so the next time you boot you get your changes there uh, so it has uh, only a few packages uh, like Python Python pip and git to be able to like clone your work from github and also it has some Wi-Fi firmware to make sure it works on most uh, Wi-Fi devices and all that stuff is automated to be boot on uh, is automated to, to boot on start basically so without further ado let me do the demonstration so first it asks me to provide the video mode uh, it can be automated as well but since for the sake of clarity I want to show the uh, the actual the default uh, resolution like uh, 640 by 480 so I say a here uh, I can go for my native resolution here like 1366 4 by 6 7 8 but in this case it would be hardly see it, it would be hard to see what's going on on the screen so I'm just going for this resolution now and this is the tiny core Linux is button and eventually uh, first it would prompt me to what kind of Wi-Fi to I want to connect so first it just so like it downloads uh, it like uh, uploads all the all the Wi-Fi firmware and then uh, yeah, just scan it for available network. So this is the script called Wi-Fi.shell, which is available in the tiny core Linux by default. And uh, since I've uh, been connecting already, I only need to specify the the number of assets it uh, I want to connect to. And that's pretty much all about it. And then, bam, I'm in the Python shell. So from here, I can say, for instance, so from OS import system as shell and I can I can execute shell commands like for instance ls minus a so in the current working directory what I have is all this stuff so this you see this uh, Python Linux uh, shell let's have a look what is there so if I just say for instance like vi Python Linux dot shell it's just quite simple so first it just loads all the packages make sure the wi-fi firmware is going to be working and the wi-fi shell itself is is there then we do call this uh wi-fi shell to make sure we are prompted to which network to connect then we clear the screen and enter in the python shell that's pretty much all about it and to make sure it actually runs um uh if we have a look at ash rc file then here down below you see like it's already there, so just call in this, this file and we're done basically. It's pretty much all about it. Well, another uh, quite interesting thing that we can consider uh, let's go for ls minus a again. So you see this local, so this local folder it contains Python packages that are there. So I say ls local, um, so bin and lib. And we're going to lib and Python 3.6. Well, actually, uh, as for the Python version, it might seem a little bit outdated, but uh, Python 3.6 is what is supported by the tiny core Linux for both Python and pip. You can install Python 3.9, and then if you trick the pip to to rename this folder from Python 3.6 to, to Python 3.9, it would most likely work. I didn't test that, but something tells me that it should be working, actually. So go into Python 3.6 and go into site packages, right? So here, for instance, uh, I have my customly installed request library, 
And I want to also demonstrate how to install new library uh, via pip. Like just just like we casually do this. And um, yeah, what else? Yeah, that's probably. Yeah, I just just want to demonstrate some import requests. And we do have our requests. And if I want to say requests dot get, and let's say let's try google.com and I want to extract the text from there and yeah we got the response from Google so far so good well obviously uh, to make it to like to be able to extract the text for instance it could be nice to use some HTTP selector well beautiful soup might be on the cars so I don't have this at the moment so if I say uh, import BS4 for instance I don't have it yeah but I can say shell and then uh, just saying pip install and bs4 and I need to specify minus minus user to make sure it goes to my local home directory and when I reboot I'll show you how this is gonna be uh, persistence it would be so uh, on reboot it would actually like uh, copy the data from the random access memory to my home directory right so uh, now I can say from BS4 report beautiful soup like this and um, again if I do this let's say if I do my request uh, let's say response is equal to this request and now let's say content equals to beautiful soup and response and now if we say content dot get text for instance we get all the text from Google some Unicode characters which, which is not that greatly supported but anyways uh, hopefully, hopefully like proof of concept kind of shows itself clearly okay um so what else can we do? Well, obviously, you're not forced to code from within the Python shell. Uh, you can just create a file and run it. Uh, that's quite okay. So let's say if I do again like shell, um, let's say bi. So you, you can you can use your custom editor. It's not a big deal. Um, if it's Python based, it's not a problem at all. It's just can install it as a package to the home directory. Uh, it's also possible to create your own uh, your own packages for tiny core Linux, which is a little bit more complicated, but still possible. Anyways, um, let's call it hello.py, right? And here I say just print hello Python Linux. And I write and quit. And no, you probably already guessed. I just say Python three, hello to Pi, and I get uh, and I get my stuff executed there. So that's it. Um, you can also you can power off. Uh, you can reboot by saying sudo reboot or power off. But also, if you're tired of uh, this Python shell, you can say Control D twice, uh, like this and you're back to to the shell basically so here you have all this that same thing and for instance if you don't want this python linux to be activated you can just go to the i and dash rc and just remove this line that's that's it it's no longer be on the cards after so i can probably demonstrate this so insert just command this out right quit and I say sudo reboot so now once I reboot I just want to uh, show you how uh, so like the shutdown in progress so just copy this data to the home directory so now the beautiful soup module that we have installed should already be there on the USB flash drive the home directory so yeah, uh, just to give you an idea about the greater resolution here, just go for a native resolution, for instance. It's probably not that 
not not seeing that nice but anyways just to give an idea so yeah and okay so this time yeah, I actually commanded out that script uh, but the problem is that now I don't have uh, I don't have the Wi-Fi because I actually forgot to load those scripts so if we just well um well let me just uh, actually run this because otherwise yeah uh, probably you can pay you can put with the Wi-Fi part to, to just to give an idea so VI uh, Python shell. So this line uh, loads the Wi-Fi module. So probably it should be actually considered be being in the Ash RC, not in this Python shell. But anyways, as well as this this part. So that's you can you can configure it on your own. Anyways, I just run the script now to uh, to give an idea. So just like uploading all loading all the modules. And prompting to connect to Wi-Fi again, and yeah, and my my Wi-Fi can can fail me. It's not really stable, unfortunately. But anyways, what I want to demonstrate now is that the beautiful soap has been stored locally. That's it. So um, I can say let's go again import requests and. From BS4 import beautiful soup and yeah here we go so beautiful soup has been has been added there so that's kind of how it works so probably one last thing which is not really specific to to this kind of Python Linux but which is specific to the tiny core Linux which is which this thing is is actually it's just a custom build build off so uh, let me just exit from here. So, uh, there is a nice command TC, uh, to, TC stands for Tiny Core Extensions Application Browser. Let's uh, search by the keywords, for instance. So, uh, Python 3.9, if you want the newer Python version. See, like it is here. So, if you want to load this, well, uh, I'm not going to be loading Python 3.9. Uh, uh, I'll probably try, let's maybe try to. Uh, Let's try some different text editor, for instance. Uh, so, for instance, we can try so keyword, and let's search for a nano text editor. Um, whoa, 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 why did I? Why did I? Hold on a sec. No. Uh, yeah, quit. Okay, where did I? <laughs> I didn't get. Where did I get into? So keywords. Uh, Nano. Oh, it just finds the the exact one for some reason. Anyways, we have this Nano T T C Z T C Z. All right. So if I say T C E load, you know minus W W to download in my and I to actually install it, and I say Nano, and I think even T C Z is not equal. Is not yeah. It just installs Nano. And now if I say nano, I actually, I'm getting into the nano, which is really fantastic. So, uh, control X to exit. But what is even more cool, that if I now reboot, this nano would still be there. Uh, because, if I would just see, let's go to mount. Yeah, by the way, uh, as for the mounts, so, let's go CD to the root. So here uh, you have this mount, so let's see the here. So mount, less. Uh, SDB is my USB flash drive, SDA one and two are my hard drives. So they are now mounted, you can mount them, it's not a big deal, so you can browse uh, whatever lap uh, whatever hard drive on your laptop. Uh, but uh, I'm going to this SDB, which is my USB flash drive. Uh, CD SDB. And here you see this TCE folder, so CD TCE list, and this on boot list. I think Nano should be added there. It wasn't there before, like, uh, but now scat on boot list, on boot list. Yeah, now it just added Nano. It's actually the only the only thing that is there. 
because there was there were nothing before this. So this makes sense. Now if I say sudo reboot, then the next time I go in there, it would actually indeed have the nano text editor being available. And you can use whatever whatever package you like. You can also do some uh, you can also do some visual like x11 desktop it's it's using FLTK with FL uh, window manager it doesn't look that great but anyways it's like nano has just been loaded which is cool and although still I don't have my extensions for Wi-Fi being loaded but because I've disabled the script but if I go to nano the nano is here so I hope this makes perfect sense. Well, okay, guys, this is it from my side. Thanks for watching. I'll give a link to the ISO so you can give it a try. This is it from my side. Take care.